thyself, thy prepping's health. So, are you the type of person who would help someone? Or do you have to access the situation first and find out who that person is? I know what type of person I am. I'm very standoffish um, till I get to know you. And if I get to know you and don't like you, I'm going to stay standoffish. So, um, but that's me, you know. I don't like to use the word judge, but I size up a person by their character. Um, some people are assholes and can't help it. Um, but they are what they are, you know. But uh, I'm not going to surround myself with that. I'm just not, you know what I mean? I can deal with a person who is straightforward. To me, that's different than being an asshole. So, you know, if you're the type of person who lays it down like it is, I respect that. Um, if you're a person who just badgers people because you've got a small mind complex, I don't have time for you. And I, we, we will quickly part ways. So, but I'm also the type of person I would help anyone that I feel is genuine in need. Um, just as quick as I'll deny anyone that I feel is genuinely just trying to get what they can from me. Um, that's the cloth I'm cut from. But it comes from having a, a hard working background and understand, understanding the value of my hard labor. And just understanding the value of time. The older I get, the more I understand that my time is more valuable than ever. So, what kind of cloth are you cut from? Uh, just leave some comments down below. But also, what part of humanity do we keep as a prepper, knowing thyself? What, um, how much of it gets lost in a SHTF situation? When everything is hectic around you and your world's turned upside down and your comfort's gone, your money's gone, maybe some family members are gone, and things just aren't looking so good. What kind of person or personality comes out then? Do you remain the same person that you are? Do you get a slightly more harsher? Or do you see everything as sympathetic? Because they all have their dangers. They all have risky sides of being that type of person. Um, a sympathetic person could be easily manipulated or easily tricked. Um, but at the same time, they can also be a, the biggest blessing that a person can receive and need. Um, I think you need to be a good balance of both. You need to lead with a godly heart, but at the same time, don't be anyone's fool. Um, keep your wits about you. Don't be over eagerly about anything. Assess your feelings as quick as you do the situation. Don't let excitement rule your decision making. Um, keep your head level, like I said, and read the room. Just simply read the room. And being able to successfully read a room comes with being able to trust yourself. Been able to trust your feelings. Um, been able to trust what your gut's telling you. So, um, getting to know thyself, thy true self, not the one that we we show everyone on a day to day basis. And not saying that all people are fake. I'm just saying that 
we have a reserved side that we keep for ourselves. Sometimes we just keep it for our family members. Um, size up your prep into that person, not your facade person. Um, because that will make a difference in a SHTF of how you'll survive. Uh, if you're a hothead and you make decisions without really putting any thought into it, I would suggest you learn temperament um, because that hot-headedness will cause you to make foolish decisions and possibly get yourself hurt or killed or family, uh, especially when you have people that are standing behind you that are relying on you to be the brick wall that keeps you from danger. When you're that person who is keeping the wolves away, you need to be level-headed. Um, know when to release the beast. Uh, there's a time and place for everything. Um, but you definitely need to have a good mixture. you got to have a kind and cool collective kind of personality also with a bit of compassion but a monster that's at the at the door and ready and waiting just to be released uh, because we all know how the world is it's a mean unfair run you through the gutter kind of place uh, just merely walking from one corner to the next can scar you uh, but it can also be the most glorious place you've ever seen uh, things that make you smile There's so many different levels of emotion and so much caught up with people people can be fickle they can be dangerous they can be helpful they can be horrors uh, they can be angels in disguises. But the point I'm trying to make here is know thyself, know thy strengths. That comes with everything. Know your weaknesses. Admitting your weaknesses to yourself. Because that's when you're honest with yourself. You're honest with thyself. That's when you'll start prepping in a way that will actually benefit you when your stress level is pinging at 100 plus. So, it's just something I wanted to lay out there for everyone to kind of take a step back and have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one truthful talk with yourself. Because if you're prepping on things that you don't even know how to use, um, things that you absolutely would probably have been better off with something that more suited you and examples it could be anything from a weapon that just doesn't fit you but yet all your buddies have one so now you've got one uh, Anything to pack in a backpack that's way too heavy that you couldn't make two miles, a little long, ten miles, and a hike in a day. So, just know that you have to be truthful with yourself. You have to really, really be truthful with yourself. And only put the things out there that you can handle. And you prep in that mindset. Um, it goes as simple as don't put away cans and jars of food that you won't eat. Um, if you're in an SHTF situation and you're relying on that food. And you know that it's something that, I mean, you may eat it. But in those times, the little things will become big things. 
And when you're sitting in that situation and you're having a choke down that uh, can of anchovies or kimchi, and you know that's something that you just really don't like, it's going to cause you a bigger discomfort than it would when you had multiple choices. So little things like that can work on your psyche, can break you down, um, and just make things ten times worse. Know thyself. Know what you like. Know what's with the, what's within your means. What can you afford to put back? Don't put yourself in a bind prepping. Know what you can afford. Know what you need. Don't be embarrassed to admit that, hey, you know, I've got to have these particular things or life's just going to be not worth living. And sometimes it's not really so much as things as it may be people. So if you have someone that you absolutely wouldn't be able to live without if they weren't right by your side when SHTF, then you make plans that way. You prep that way. So if you have a spouse, an example, that travels out of town a lot, always know where they're going, for one thing. Always know a way of how to get to them. If things were to break out when you were apart, have a way. Have stored gas, a vehicle that would run after an EMP strike. Um, just know that you may have a 50-50 shot that you're going to have to bug out and go find that loved one. But if everyone's going to be right there at home with you, you prepare in a slightly different way. There's so many examples that I could give of this. But I can only give you examples from Papa's farm expect, you know, perspective. You have to be truthful with yourself. You have to prep in not only just a smart way, a protective way, but you also have to prep in an honest way. So... Getting to know thy prepping self is just part of the psychology of prepping. It's part of, um, like I said, being truthful with yourself. And being truthful with the situation that you are in. So, it's not to discourage anyone from pe prepping. As a matter of fact, it's just the opposite. It's to help you prep in a way that's actually going to work for you and like I said when it's an SHTF situation having all these things ironed out will cause you less stress in an already maxed out stress environment so just be honest with yourself um and prep around that. Prep around the real you. And you'll find that uh, if we ever do find ourselves in the SHTF, which look like it's coming quickly, you'll be a little bit more prepared for your personal situation. Now, I know everyone's paying attention and seeing things like the leader of China and four other world leaders as well as Putin they're talking about getting rid of the uh, US standard dollar as far as a uh, world currency now being truthful with ourselves if that happens things in our life are going to change and I know we all know people who think that that will never happen or they think that 
possibility that nothing would change if the dollar did collapse. I mean, there are people out there that really have no clue. So I know what what I just said sounds foolish, but trust me, for every shoe, there's a foot to fit it. And these people are going to be running around out there around you. So you know your environment. You probably got a good idea how many of these people, or at least a generalized idea of how many of these people will be running around up around you. My guess would be the closer do you live into the city, the more of these people you're going to have running around you. I'm not saying that the rural areas won't be affected. They'll be out there too. And even if they don't start there, they'll probably wind up ending up there. The ones that make it that far anyway. But be honest with your environment. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your family. And if you know that, say, you're living closer to a city and you know that things are going to get crazy because there's so many people in a concentrated area and most of them may not be prepared, then you need, and you have a family, you need to prepare them on weapons training on exit tactics um, everybody should have a memorized job of what to do when it's go time when the buttons pushed there shouldn't be one two three minute conversations about what you need to grab what you need to do and I know it seems kind of silly saying well I'm not gonna grab my kids and practice this I'm not gonna scare them by having these little trainings, they're going to think I'm a nut job. Trust me, you would rather have them think foolish of you for a moment than you would them to regret not prepping. So, just my suggestion. Know your situation. Be aware of your surroundings. Be real with yourself of what your actual situation is and put it on a gauge level. Zero being the best and 10 being the shittiest. And then prep around that. Because we've had the luxury of living in a world where none of us had to be honest with ourselves for a long time. And I'm really gonna break this part down what I'm talking about. We've had the luxuries of driving up to drive through windows. We've had the luxuries of makeup, um, prosthetic limbs, uh, hair growing clubs, um, false teeth. I mean, there's so many different angles you can look at this, but we've lived in the world of band-aids and patches and easy access and comfort and to lose that all overnight a lot of people won't be able to handle it a lot of people just honestly they're not going to be able to handle it and half of it comes because they're not being truthful with themselves because we were afforded to be able to live a lie were afforded the luxury of being able to not be truthful with ourselves and our surroundings. And we get caught up in this trying to not really always just keep up with the Joneses, but we just live with things in our lives that are unnecessary. Because a lot of times they're the easy things. It's not easy to practice growing your own grains so you can make your own bread when you can go to the grocery store or your Dollar G or your Walmart or whatever and pick up a loaf of bread for a couple bucks. A couple bucks is a lot easier to shell, to shell out than it is some sweat and some blisters on your hands. 
and going through the process of learning the knowledge. Um, it just is. So people take those easy avenues, and they do it for everything. Uh, we do it for our food consumption. We do it for our clothes, um, just comforts that we use every day. We always expect when we go to that sink, we go to that tap water, we turn that knob, it's going to come on. When we hit that light switch, we're going to have power. When we open that refrigerator, there's going to be food in it. And that, I mean, even if you're the one putting the food in it, buying the groceries and working for it, um, we always think that we're going to have the luxury of a job. One day you may find yourself sitting at home in the dark in your house. There's going to be no lights. And if it's in the wintertime, no heat. And your animals are going to be looking at you hungry. Your kids are going to be looking at you hungry. Your spouse is going to be looking at you wondering what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And they don't want an answer tomorrow or next week. They, they need an answer now because they need that comfort back that we all took for granted for so long. They're not going to be able to sleep without that comfort. They're, they're going to hit a stage of worrying that they're not used to, a level of stress they're not used to. Um, people are going to act frantic. They're not going to be thinking straight. And if you've ever been a person in a room with several people not thinking straight and you're the only one thinking clear-headed, it can get a bit chaotic. And trying to bring some sensibility and peace into a situation like that, you're going to jump into fight or flight. You're either going to help them calm down and bring things back to a rational way of thinking, or you're going to get frantic. You're going to start freaking out. Prepping by knowing thyself is a way that you can get through a lot of psychological, emotional, and physical situations. So, evaluate yourself. Don't be scared to. Step back. Look at the real you in the mirror. And by doing that, I think we'll all be better off. Um... Like I said, just looking at your weaknesses and your strengths. They'll guide you. Just be honest with yourself. So prep to know thyself. And you'll be a lot happier prepper. Alright. This is Mike with Papa's Farm. And I'm going to end the stream right here. I hope everyone has a great day. Uh, I am currently uh, working with Ghost on some merch. So I will have some information hopefully up on that soon. Uh, I also have opened up a Patreon. Um, I'll try to add the link. Not sure if I'll be able to in this video, but if you'd like to support some of my work, um, you can find me over at Papa's Farm on Patreon. And I also, um, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I really want to see what people think about this type of content um it's a little bit deeper talk but i think most people can relate with what i'm talking about so until the next video i hope everyone has a great day and i'm mike with papa's farm <laughs>